In this video, we're going to look at how to create functions in MATLAB, which are more like functions that you would see in other languages, rather than simply a script or a list of commands. To start with, we'll create a new script, noting that it's docked, just like as we did in the previous example. If you forget how to do that, it's that little down arrow here, and one of these will say dock if it's outside of it. Functions are declared in MATLAB as follows, keyword function, square brackets, output arguments, equals, function name, and then round brackets, input arguments. Alright, and that's it. Nice and simple. There is no declaration in terms of data type, so it doesn't matter whether you pass into it strings or numbers or matrices or structures or whatever they happen to be. They all come in as simply a variable name. And the nice thing is you can also have multiple output arguments. For this example, we're going to write a function that calculates the area and the circumference of a circle given the radius. To do this, I have to find my function and then I'm going to give it a little bit of documentation. Area, circumference equals circle radius. Calculate the area and circle radius. Okay, note the sent sign indicates a comment and all text in green is treated as a comment, not executed by, by MATLAB. So let's implement the corresponding equations. Alright, and now I'm going to save this file. So, Control S or save up here. Very important that the function name, circle, is the same as the file name. Don't change it. It must be the same or else you might get yourself stuck. So I'm going to save that in the current directory. The MATLAB has recognized that circle is a function and video 2, which was from the last video, is a script. So let's try and call that. Circle of 5. Alright, so we see there we get one solution back, that in fact is the area, and that's because that's the first output argument. If we want to actually access both output arguments, we must use square brackets like an array and name each of the output arguments that we want to be able to access. So now we get the area and the circumference. Note that these names or these variables don't have to be the same as the original function. All right, they can be whatever you like them to be. It's just the order will always match the order defined in the function. All right, so that's very easy. We can add in, change that input argument or do whatever we like, and that will now be able to calculate that for us. Let's try something tricky. Let's try and calculate the areas and circumferences for a range of circles, ranging from five to 10, let's say, centimeter radius. It's going to work? No. So one of the things we're going to see in uh, the next video is the difference between these dot operators and the matrix operators. For now the solution is what, to what's called vectorize this. So that enables us to go radius each element in that squared rather than the radius as an array or in this case a vector squared. We try that again Okay, we've now calculated areas for a range of different radiuses and the circumferences. All right, so that's pretty cool. We've automatically made our function compatible with arrays. And the same thing would occur if we were to give it, for example, a matrix. There's an array of areas and circumferences, ignoring the negative ones. They were just some random numbers there. Okay, so let's clear the screen. So that's pretty cool. Um, how about if the user gives, just as we saw then, a <coughs> funny radius? Do we want to be able to still calculate a area if the user gave a odd input? Probably not. So we can use an if statement here. If radius is less than or equal to zero, we can send out an error message. Strings in MATLAB, single quotes or the apostrophe, 
and we can display a custom message here. Noting our if statement is always followed by an end and should always be indented out. So now if we try and do that, we see that we get a corresponding error message associated with it. One more thing I want to show you is how to add optional input arguments to our function. So let's say we want to make it so that the person passes true as a second argument, then the circle is actually also drawn for us. All right, we know the equations to of a circle from the radius, so let's implement it. So we'll say if draw is true, we can just say if draw, and I go t is equal to in space 0 to 2 times pi, noting the third argument is optional, we'll default to 100, x is equal to radius times sine oh, cos of t, and y is equal to radius times sine of t. And we'll plot x versus y and put an end statement there. So now, if I pass true, in fact any number greater than 0 is the second argument, Oop, with a practical radius that will then be drawn for us and as we expect that looks looks like a circle once the aspect ratio is, is corrected for. However that argument is not yet optional. If we drop it, it will say hold on we haven't got enough input arguments. So to correct for that what I do is I go if the number of arguments in or short n arg in less than however many you expect, then give it a default value. So in this case, if the user only passes one argument, then make sure draw is false, so it's not drawn by default. And now it works just fine. Uh, and if we do pass the second argument, then the circle is drawn. All right, so that's basically functions. They're pretty easy to use. They allow you to save something useful that you've written or to be able to modularize a project you're working in. So each function can do one part of it, they can be easily tested, they can have their own error catching, they have their own optional arguments depending on how you want to use them, and if you type help space the name of your function, the documentation that I entered up here will be included as part of it so that other people know how to use it. All right? highly recommend that you document your code, you include some sort of error catching, and Always comment your code. Optionally draw a circle requested by the user. Alright, 